Tis the season to shine with H&M. Discover the holiday collection and find fashionable pieces for your wardrobe or for under the tree. Get inspired and dazzle with this year's glam. From tuxedo styles, bow detailed pieces, impressive prints, and more. From unforgettable looks to unforgettable gifts. With fashion finds to home decor, find it all at H&M. Treat your loved ones and yourself this season. Shop in-store or at H&M.com. This episode is brought to you by Vital Farms. Isn't it bullshit to have to question where your food comes from? At Vital Farms, you can trace your pasture-raised eggs all the way back to the source, the pasture. On the side of each pasture-raised carton of eggs, you'll find the name of the farm where your eggs were laid. And when you look the farm up on their website, you'll get a peek at all the sunshine, fresh air, and open space the hens enjoy. Learn more and find out where to buy them at vitalfarms.com. Vital Farms, keeping it bullshit free. This episode is brought to you by Shopify. That's the sound of switching your business to Shopify, the global commerce platform that supercharges your selling. Harness the best converting checkout and same intuitive features, trusted apps, and powerful analytics used by the world's leading brands. Stop leaving sales on the table. Discover why millions trust Shopify to build, grow, and run their business. Sign up today for your $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash tech23. This episode is brought to you by Kia's first three-row all-electric SUV, the Kia EV9, with available all-wheel drive and seating for up to seven adults, with a zero to 60 speed that thrills you one minute, and available reclining lounge seats that unwind you the next. Visit kia.com slash EV9 to learn more. Ask your Kia dealer for availability. No system, no matter how advanced, can compensate for all driver error and or driving conditions. Always drive safely. was the first night home for the holidays and all through your town not one thumb was quiet a lot of swiping going down you created the perfect bumble profile with care in hopes that your dream guy or gal may be out there when what to your wandering eyes should appear but a ton of faces you haven't seen in years there's a rando from high school your ex from eighth grade a kid you used to babysit and your literal uncle dave As cringe as this feels, the only thing worse would be if one of them stumbled upon your profile first. But there's no need to panic or erase your face from the app. You can go incognito with one simple tap. Disappear from the others till you say they're a match. And have more fun finding your next hometown catch. With peace of mind and your profile hidden from sight, happy holidating to all and to all a good night. Happy holidating with incognito mode from Bumble. Download today. Welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast, where your source for personal, professional, and organizational growth and development, where we share original research, explore industry trends, and interview executives and thought leaders from across the globe. We hope you join us often for practitioner-oriented content around all things related to leadership, HR, talent management, organizational development, and change management. Maximize your personal and organizational potential with Human Capital Innovations Podcast. Do you enjoy the Human Capital Innovations Podcast? Enjoy ad-free listening by going to the Patreon page. And please consider contributing even at the producer or sponsorship level. And please leave a review. Thank you for your support. Welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. In this HCI podcast episode, I talk with Jessica Baker about HR tech and upskilling, learning, and development prioritization in the workplace. Jessica Baker, welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. Hi, thanks. It's a pleasure to have you. You're joining us from the Austin area. I'm south of Salt Lake City in Utah. And today we're going to be talking about HR tech and upskilling, learning, and development prioritization in the workplace, specifically talking about your role at Enterprise Ireland and some of the things you do to support uh, organizations 
that are in this space. As we get started, I wanted to share Jessica's bio with everybody. Jessica Baker is VP of Digital Technologies for Enterprise Ireland and works with Irish HR and talent tech companies to expand into the North American market and US-based companies looking for innovative solutions. Anything else, Jessica, you would like to share with listeners by way of your background before we launch on into the conversation? No, but I think that generally sums it up. Um, I've worked mostly in startups and small to medium organizations. Um, so excited to have been with EI for over two years now and all the cool work that we get to do. Yeah. So so did you join um, before or after the start of the pandemic? <laughs> right before. I was actually in our office for a week and a half until they were like, okay, just kidding. We're going home. So you had a was the first night home for the holidays and all through your town not one thumb was quiet a lot of swiping going down you created the perfect bumble profile with care in hopes that your dream guy or gal may be out there when what to your wandering eyes should appear but a ton of faces you haven't seen in years there's a rando from high school your ex from eighth grade a kid you used to babysit and your literal uncle dave As cringe as this feels, the only thing worse would be if one of them stumbled upon your profile first. But there's no need to panic or erase your face from the app. You can go incognito with one simple tap. Disappear from the others till you say they're a match and have more fun finding your next hometown catch. With peace of mind and your profile hidden from sight, happy holidating to all and to all a good night. Happy holidating with incognito mode from Bumble. Download today. This episode is brought to you by Clavio, the platform that powers smarter digital relationships. With Clavio, you can activate all your customer data in real time, connect seamlessly with your customers across all channels, guide your marketing strategy with AI powered insights, recommendations, and automated assistance. Deliver experiences that feel individually designed at scale and grow your business faster. Power smarter digital relationships with Klaviyo. Learn more at klaviyo.com slash Spotify. That's K-L-A-V-I-Y-O dot com slash Spotify. Whole week and a half. That's great. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was super wonderful. Um, we were like ready to book my plane ticket to go back to Ireland to meet colleagues. And the day we were going to book it, they were like, no, see ya, we got to go home for two weeks. And we just like kept pushing it out, pushing it out, pushing it out. <laughs> <laughs> that, that is funny. That's, that's how it was at the very beginning. We're like, oh, it's going to be a couple weeks. Uh, yeah, two years, exactly. two years later, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> well, good, good. It, it's been an interesting transition, I think, for everyone the last couple of years. Lots of learning that's occurred, um, and again, it's great to be with you uh, and to to be able to chat about Enterprise Ireland and some of the things you do to support businesses. Um, maybe you can just start by giving us a little bit more of a rundown, uh, telling us a little bit about what Enterprise Enterprise Ireland is, what your role is, and how you're working with organizations. Yeah, so Enterprise Ireland is the trade and BC arm of the Irish government. Um, So our headquarters back in Dublin invest in Irish businesses and our overseas team helps those businesses as they export and grow outside of Ireland. So my role and my team here in the United States and in our 40 global offices is essentially to help them in any way that we can, whether that's introductions to accountants, lawyers, advisors, potential new customers, or assisting in marketing campaigns, pitch decks, so on and so forth um no two days are the same we're always working on different projects with different Irish companies um but I really like to I think the only way I can explain it to people here in the states um if we don't have anything like this um, is that we're essentially small business consultants um, employed by the Irish government yeah that is interesting we don't really have that here (laughs) do we yeah no we do not (laughs) we do not um good so why Ireland? Uh, you know, why why is Irish innovation uniquely beneficial to American companies? Why, you know, for an American listener, why would they want to reach out to you and explore this? Yeah, so I think there's always two reasons that I come up with when I get asked this question. Um, so the first one is, and this comes from, I work with our HR teams, but I also work with our cybersecurity team, um, but privacy regulations. So coming from the EU, Irish companies have a particular strength when it comes to GDPR and online privacy. Um, as an embedded part of the European market, these organizations are super well-versed in meeting regulations and protecting information on all ends, um, whether it's employee or client. All of that security stuff is built into all of their solutions, no matter what industry you're working in, which is really great and really beneficial. Um, 
And the second reason that I always give for this is that Ireland just has this amazingly skilled talent pool with some of the hardest working and most innovative individuals I've ever met. And I've been working in the startup world for years and years and years now. Um, we have amazing universities, we have killer programs for startups that have spun out many different of our EI clients. Um, one of our newer companies, Inclusio, came out of one of our universities. Um, and all of these organizations and companies, like you're really going to feel like your business matters and what's and that they're doing everything that they can to help make you successful. Um, so that's, I always say that's what our Irish advantage is. I'm just curious, why do you think that is? What, you know, the, you have this great diverse skill set, um, great diversity in terms of the people involved. Uh, it, it is quite unique, uh, as I've talked with people from around the world uh, on these related topics. Uh, you you kind of have a secret sauce there. I'm just curious why you think that is. Um, I don't really know. It's like, the people in Ireland are just ridiculously hardworking um, and our university system is great. The education system is wonderful um, and a lot of people come to school there. So it cre- helps create kind of that diverse workforce um, and people want to stay and raise families there. And so I think it's really just kind of a product of all of the above um, and the history of the culture of the people of the country. Yeah, well, that's that's super interesting in and of itself. Uh, it'll be interesting to look into. So what type of HR tech companies do you work with the most? I, I'm sure there's a variety, um, but what yeah. do you tend to work with the most? Have you seen growth in a particular type of organization, a certain type of country or sector or a c- company or sector in the last year or so? Yeah, so obviously I do work with a wide range um, from HRIS technology to ATS to L&D um, to recruitment benefits all of the above. Um, But over the last year, we've definitely seen an increase in solutions around DEI, um, diversity, equity, inclusion, belonging. Um, It's not a secret that the last few years have made that very clear um, that companies, but a lot of U.S. companies um, need to be better in this area. So we've seen a lot of firms like ETU, Social Talent, Star Circle, putting a lot of research and development money into creating solutions for this. Um, as well as the likes of work human that are assisting in employee engagement to try and combat the great resignation or migration or whatever we're calling it at this point. Um, but yeah, the DEI and the employee engagement side is really what we've seen kind of growing at a rapid rate over the last couple of years. Yeah. And I, and I suppose that's consistent with what, you know, we've seen, you know, in other markets, um, in the U S for example. So that's interesting. Um, and it, it's it's good to see though that that is a is a big emphasis for organizations Absolutely. because it's it's clearly uh, you know a, a challenge that many organizations continue to face. Um, now let's talk about remote work. We already alluded to this a little bit just in relation to your work uh, with Enterprise Ireland, um, but remote work has driven the growth of digitization in the last year or so, of course. And what types of platforms do you see companies using the most to help enhance and streamline their HR practice? Um, so I think a lot of it comes, it's like overall. So we have a lot of companies that are working to help facilitate like hot desking and flexible working um, and stuff like that. We have one company that they're currently in the R&D phase for kind of figuring out the flexible working for shift workers and like factory workers and stuff like that, where it's, it's not as easy to say like, oh, I don't feel great. I'm going to work from home today or I need to run to the doctor. I'll be in for three hours and I'll work the rest of the day from home. Like, that's that kind of stuff. Um, we have also seen a ton of increase in people using like PEOs like Boundless to solve the remote hiring and like employment struggle, um, internal recruitment applications. So being able to keep and promote the people that you have hired. Um, we have a great company higher up that are doing that. Um, and then L&D solutions. It's been huge. Um, I think those are the biggest things that we've seen. Yeah, well, that's interesting. Of course, there's, you know, in the in the HR tech space, there's so many cool things happening, so many new innovations constantly emerging. Um, so there's tons we could talk about there, I'm sure. Uh, let's focus in on that, on the learning and development, the upskilling space here for a minute. Um, yeah. How is that 
being prioritized right now in the workplace from your experience uh, at Enterprise Ireland. Do you work with companies that specialize in that? What are they, what's kind of their focus? What are they trying to accomplish? Um, why is it such a huge growth area right now? Yeah, so I think the answer to how is it being prioritized uh, three years ago would have been much different than how it is right now. Um, as companies are starting to realize that benefits don't just mean like health insurance, um, it also includes things like L and D and upskilling. Um, employees want to know that you're investing in them and their careers. It's becoming much more important in the hiring and retention space. Um, we actually have a handful of companies that are really knocking it out of the park in this realm. Um, ETU is doing um, great things in the L and D space in simulation based learning. Um, Learn upon also great and social talent. Um, social talent actually focuses on training hiring teams, um, hiring and talent teams. So they're doing really, really great things as well. Um, I think it, this just has become such a big priority for employees. Um, and as employees expect more from their employers, um, it's become much more important. So, so yeah, that's really great context. And what, what do you see as some of the, the biggest trends or innovations coming out of the L&D space right now? Uh, from an HR tech standpoint? Innovations in what way? So like in what kind of... Yeah. Sure. I mean, I suppose in any way, um, but particularly in terms of platforms used, um, the, the types of interfaces used, how how they're trying to connect with learners, anything like that. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I think the stimulation-based learning is the biggest thing. Um, it's putting people in real context and to make real life decisions um, on what they would do in different situations, um, especially DEI, L and D, stuff like that. Um, taking people away from just sitting there reading something and then answering a quiz and saying, okay, cool, I'm done, bye. Um, it's really making sure that that is a holistic approach to L and D. Um, so some people are really great with videos. Some people are really great with reading and retaining. Um, some people are better at if they read it, write it, and then do a quiz on it, stuff like that. So we've seen really big things coming out in that space, um, especially alongside all of the research that's come out recently about how different people learn um, and how different people work. So I think that's been the biggest thing that we've seen. Yeah. And maybe uh, talk a little bit more about the simulations, because that's intriguing to me. Um, are, are you talking about simulations in the, in the sense of like metaverse kind of um, <laughs> VR simulations um, or, or what, what type of simulations uh, do you see? Yeah, so none of none that I've seen so far in the AR VR space, but I'm sure it's coming. Um, most of it is just working through um, real life situations um, on your screen. Um, so it's hearing the situation, answering questions, and then depending on how you answer those questions, it moves you forward to a different scenario. Um, so if I answered one way and my colleague answered another way, um, we would be taken down two completely different paths to make sure that we're getting the right education for um, the way that we answered, um, if something needs to be corrected, or just all sorts of things like that. So it's less on the like metaverse AR VR, but more on the like real life situation. Yeah. Okay. Cool. And I like you said, it probably is coming, right? <laughs> sure. um, and and just like I, I think about the gamification of L and D, and and maybe that's something you've seen. Um, mm -hmm. I've seen it. In the university learning and development space, um, it's it's creeping in more and more. And I know corporations have been using it internally for their training and development. Um, we're trying to use it more. Um, and gamification is an intriguing component, you know, to to just motivate people uh, to 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 uh, find more more meaning and just drive in their in their learning um, to reskill and upskill. Uh, so that's another facet. And, and I, I suspect, you know, that in short order, we'll start to see um, in the VR and, 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 uh, and uh, what, what's the other term? The AR. AR, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, in the VR and the AR space, uh, we're going to start to see that come out. And it'll be super interesting to see how that catches on or doesn't catch on. You know, Oculus is cool, but I also get a headache if I use it for too long. And so, you know, <laughs> I don't I don't. And how many of those are we buying for each office? And how are we doing that if people are working remotely? Like we're not just like sending people VR headsets all the time.
Right. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. So what, what would you say has been the most surprising factor or among the most surprising factors driving uh, employees during the last couple of years to leave in, the, in leaving their existing roles, leaving their organizations. You, you mentioned the great resignation, the great reawakening, the great whatever, blah, 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 um, <laughs> whatever, however we term it, the reality is it's an interesting labor market. People have options, they have choices. People are leaving, they're going to other opportunities. Um, you know, some of that could just be reprioritizing, you know, what's most important to them and deciding they need to shift. Um, but there's lots of different things that go into that. What, what have you seen from the companies you've worked with uh, over the last couple of years? Yeah, I think you hit on it there with that prioritizing thing. I think that's been the biggest, I think, shock to me and to others is how widespread that priority shift was. Um, everyone kind of over the last couple of years, it's, it's not just cool offices anymore. It's knowing that your organization values you as a person and your future growth. Um, and wants to do what's best for you. Um, and I think it's also shocking. I think I expected, I have a 22 year old brother who is entering the workforce and he has all these kind of idealistic views of what, what being employed looks like. Um, and when I first started talking to him about it, I was kind of like, okay, let's, let's bring that down a notch. But being in this world and talking to people, like he's not wrong. And everyone is starting to really have that idea. And and understand that our lives are not, we don't just work. Um, We need to have that balance, that blend, all of those things. Um, We've all taken stock of our lives and what's important. And the way that the job market does look, it's easy to see that there are companies out there that are willing to put their employees first and do what it takes to keep people loyal and keep them around. Um, So I think that was the biggest shock for me working in the industry um, is just how widespread that priority shift was. Yeah. Well, that, that's interesting. And, and I was talking with another um, researcher in the workspace and, and she was talking about connection and, and uh, the ability to have relationships at work. And I, and I think that's been another piece, you know, you, you referred to it a little bit in terms of um, how, how much do you feel like your, your employer invest in you as a whole person? How much mm-hmm. do you feel like they've supported you during a really crazy couple of years? Um, how much have they invested in you? And, and there's a lot in there, right, that we could pull out and dissect. Um, but one of those components is, do you trust your employer? Do you trust your coworkers? Do you trust your boss? Do you have relationships with them? Do you have people that you, you know, you may not like go out to, to get drinks with them after work, but while you're at work, like you trust them, you, you, you confide in them, even you'll be vulnerable with them. Um, you'll, you can work well with them. Right. And so you have those connections, you have those relationships. And what we've seen over the last couple of years is with so many organizations being thrust into virtual and distributed work, uh, while there's a ton of benefits to that, one of the challenges can be the connection piece. It's not necessarily, it's not automatic that you're not going to have connection when you're working virtually. You just have to be a little bit more intentional about how you're going to create those relationships. And so if an employee, you know, has an employer that cares, that's invested in them, that supported them during a hard time, and they have people that they work with, that they trust, that they, uh, that they have, you know, a good relationship with, uh, that reduces the likelihood of turnover dramatically. Um, there's been quite a bit of research on this. So that that is a huge piece of this, I think. When you see people leaving, why do they leave? Well, sometimes they're leaving for more money, but people are willing to give up a lot of money to have a good, meaningful workplace where they work with people they like. And so, you know, I, I think all of these things go together and we just have to be very thoughtful about it. How do we how do we invest in our people to help them and facilitate helping them develop relationships that matter? Uh, towards them, not only so they can do better work, so they can be more creative and innovative, but also just so they can be more of a complete person at work uh, and and they'll be more likely to stick around. How can we invest in our people in terms of upskilling, reskilling the L&D space um, to make sure that, you know, they feel like we care and that we want them to be better? And, you know, of course, there's a hidden motive there because if I'm investing in my people, not only will that uh, you know, help them feel invested in, not only will that, you know, help reduce turnover, but it also actually will help 
upskill them so that they're ready to take on future roles and, and future responsibilities and, and do better work. So it's, it's a win-win all the way around. Um, and it's just interesting, you know, as, as we think about these, these different um, dynamics that have played out over the last couple of years, I'm sure you see day in and day out in your work with your clients. Yep. hundred percent. And we, I mean, we have that conversation all the time. Um, even like internally, we were really encouraged to just reach out to each other anytime we needed to just like have a time to chat. Um, all of our management team was like, just talk to each other, like hang out. It's great. Um, virtually hang out for a while there. We've finally gotten our team back together for, um, a conference week, but, um, yeah, no, that employee connection piece is so crucial. Um, we actually, so one of our client companies, Work Human, they just had Work Human Live in Atlanta um, back in May. And they have a new study out with Gallup showing how recognition can stop employees from leaving. Um, and so it's just wild to see that like just getting a shout out or having someone post for your birthday, like that kind of stuff is so important. Um, and I didn't even like, yes, I know that inherently, um, but even my birthday was last Friday and the first birthday messages I got in the morning were mostly from my team and that was just one of the coolest things and hasn't really ever happened anywhere else I've worked um so yeah it's wildly important yeah and they're little things right and they may they may seem insignificant because they're little but it's it's the all the little things in aggregate that make up your experience at work right and so you know, if, if you, if it's a crappy place to work and then you get like a happy birthday shout out, that's not going to matter. <laughs> but you know, it, it, when you're consistently just doing those little things and showing people that you see them, you hear them, they matter to you. They're people, they're real people with real lives, both in and out of work. Um, you know, that matters. That makes a huge, huge difference. Uh, so yep. yeah, thank you for sharing that. Well, yeah. Jessica, this has just been a really fun conversation as we get close to the end of our time together, I wanted to give you a chance to share with listeners how they can connect with you, how they can connect with, uh, with Enterprise Ireland and find out more about the work that you're doing and, and even partner looking into partnering with you. Tell us a little bit more about how that uh, can play out and how people can connect with you and then give us a final word on the topic for today. Yeah, so um, I'm on LinkedIn, Jess Baker um, at Enterprise Ireland. My email address is also jessica.baker at enterprise-ireland.com. Um, if you want to learn more about our HR tech solutions or how you can engage with Irish organizations, please just send me an email. That is the biggest part of my job. And I love hearing from people who want to work with our companies. Um, so yeah, that's the best way to get in touch with me. I think I'm constantly on LinkedIn. It's like just never gets closed down on my computer, um, which could be a problem, but you know, it, it worked for us. Um, but yeah, no, thank you for having me. It's been really great. Um, I did not come from an HR background, but over the last two, two and a half years, um, I've been really blessed to be able to work in this industry and meet some really amazing companies and individuals all working in the industry. And it's just fascinating. I have a psychology minor, so getting to kind of put that business and psychology together for HR is really great. Um, and I'm always happy to, to chat about the industry and chat about our company. Fantastic. Thank you, Jessica. It's been a real pleasure. I encourage listeners to reach out, get connected, find out more about what Jessica and her team can do for you. And as always, I hope everyone can stay healthy and safe, that you can find meaning and purpose at work each and every day. And I hope you all have a great week. Do you enjoy the Human Capital Innovations Podcast? Enjoy ad-free listening by going to the Patreon page. And please consider contributing even at the producer or sponsorship level. And please leave a review. Thank you for your support. Thanks again for joining us for this episode of the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. I hope you stay healthy and safe and that you have a great week.